Welcome back to the Four Real Movie Club. We are in our final section here of the Mission Impossible Four Real Movie Club. And we're talking about Mission Impossible 4, Ghost Protocol. It's a 2011, you bet it, American action spy film. It's the fourth installment of the franchise and director Brad Bird's first live action film. It still stars Tom Cruise, who reprises his role as Ethan Hunt, and now has Jeremy Renner returning as Simon Pegg, and also introducing Paula Patton to the franchise as his supporting team. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Ghost Protocol was written by Andre Nemec and Josh Applebaum and produced by Cruz, J.J. Abrams, and Brian Burke. Tony, what were your initial thoughts on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? I think that this is a good step in the right direction as well. Like these movies kind of keep getting better in a way and they, they sort of know like what the problems are with the other ones and they kind of undo them and stuff. This is probably the easiest movie out of all of them to watch. You know, we've kind of been ragging on like some of the boring parts of the other ones. I would say it, it doesn't hold up as well if you just watched this one without seeing the other ones. Cause you don't know what the story is and, Especially when it comes to Mission Impossible 3, because there's a big through line to this movie that you have to have seen Mission Impossible 3 to care about. But I think if you were going to sit somebody down and go, well, you should watch one of these Mission Impossible films to see if you might like the franchise, probably Ghost Protocol is the best one. Sean, what were your initial thoughts on Mission Impossible Ghost oh, I, Protocol? I agree 100% with what Tony has said. This, for me, was the easiest one to watch out of the three. I enjoyed this one. The only reason why I fell asleep is because I had a mind brain. Otherwise, I would have stayed up and watched it all. I, I enjoyed this film a lot. Uh, just to run through some of the cast, as I already said, Tom Cruise is back as Ethan Hunt. Jeremy Renner debuts as William Brandt. Uh, Simon Pegg returns as Benji Dunn. Paula Patton is Jane Carter. Michael Nyquil is Kurt <laughs> Hendricks. <laughs> Vlad Vladimir <laughs> Mashkov is... Jesus Christ. Cedar I just kept calling him Vladimir. Uh, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Josh Holloway as Trevor Hannaway. Skip, skip, skip. Tom Wilkinson as an uncredit, uh, uncredited IMF secretary. Ving Rames is uncredited cameo as Luther Stickle. Uh, Michelle Monaghan is uncredited cameo as Hunt's wife. Level Crawford is a cameo as Julia's bodyguard. Mike Dupont is Kremlin subseller hallway guard. Okay, now we're getting to people we don't care about. Um, <laughs> the guy's like, yeah, I was mentioned on a podcast. <laughs> oh, they don't care about me. <laughs> and probably couldn't pronounce my name either. Yeah. It's because I, he's got Will. That's why. Yeah, Nyquil. So with Nyquil and all his counterparts here in the, the cast, what did you think of the cast itself, Tony? All right, so Paula Patton, was she an actress before this, or was she something else? She was. Doo, 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 doo. I had an... She was in Hitch and Deja Vu. So she was an actress, huh? She had about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine movies before she actually got Mission Impossible and Ghost Protocol. Because the I, only thing I recognize her from is Hitch. I didn't know who the hell she was when this movie came out, and eventually I found out that she was she's married or whatever to the guy who sung that um uh dog. I'm, Draw a blank on the name. The Blurred Lines. Yeah. yeah, I hate that fucking song so goddamn much. So immediately it was just kind of like, oh, you're married to that asshole? <laughs> you know? They're divorced. They divorced this year. So oh, she's good. Free agent. Good. She probably came to her senses because that song's terrible. Uh, hey, hey. Simon Pegg, great that he's popping back up. Jeremy Renner, that's kind of cool that they brought him in here. Apparently they were going to bring him in because they wanted him to take the franchise away. And like, if Tom Cruise wasn't going to do it, that they would stick with him. Sort of the same, what they did with the Bourne franchise, but it doesn't seem like it's working out for either of them for him. So he's probably pissed. He's like, <laughs> oh, I'll get to be the new mission impossible guy and the new Bourne guy. And they're like, Matthew. yeah, Matt Damon and, and Tom Cruise are going to stick Hawkeye around. Instead. Yeah. You're going to be Hawkeye. Oh, great. I'll be in Avengers. Yeah. But you're not going to be in too much of Avengers. It's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Um, I missed out on Ving Rhames not being in this movie other than one scene. That was a shame. Like, he's so cool in all the other films, and he's only in one shot in this movie, and that's it. But really cool that they kept the tradition going of killing somebody big early off, uh, early on in the movie, Josh Holloway. Like, that guy could have been a great spy in some kind of a franchise, or like a Bond villain or something like that, and um, killing off his character 
works with the film and I buy him being somebody who could just kind of like, they present to you like, all right, this guy is an agent. And you're like, all right, like, yeah, <laughs> Josh Holloway can be a fucking agent. And as much as I would have thought going into this that Paula Patton would suck, I bought her being an agent too. So I really think that all the casting is good. And uh, we were talking about earlier with Mission Impossible 2 stealing a lot from the Bond films. Leia Sedu, I think is how you pronounce her name, is uh, one of the villains in this. She's going to be in the new Bond film, Spectre. And there's something oddly sexy about her. I don't quite know what it is. She's clearly, like, nuts. But, I don't know, maybe I kind of dig crazy <laughs> checks a little bit. Like, that explained the last X. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the movie and I'm like, damn, she would totally kill, like, everybody. She's kind of hot. <laughs> So I like the casting for this all around, and the only downside to it is no, not as much Ving Rhames, and no returning like Anthony Hopkins, no returning Lawrence Fishburne, uh, you know. Sean, what were your thoughts on the casting? Well, oh, speaking of hot, Tom Cruise has grew his hair back <laughs> off this fucking film, fair play. <laughs> Simon Pegg is Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg is always funny. Jeremy Renner, not a fan. Oh, Don't like him at all. Guy. Well, you, Hawkeye sucks. It's all green arrows. Let's be honest. Sorry, you gotta be biased. I I just don't like you, I just don't like him. I I never liked him in the new Born film. That was awful. It was a bad film. Speaking of bad films, the Born film the Born films just sucked. To be fair, <laughs> I only saw the first one. You, you didn't miss much. Paula Payton is that is that the right one? That that's Jane Carter. Yeah, she was she was pretty sexy. You know. Yeah, spy get up. I would totally destroy her. If you, know, <laughs> you sure you wouldn't fall asleep? Well, it depends if Nyquil is here, you know? Nyquil. Oh, fuck Nyquil, Kurt Hendricks. Um, obviously, this is kind of a revitalization of the franchise, more or less, uh, considering the first film came out 11 years prior. You guys both mentioned that if you're going to sit down and say, hey, am I going to watch a Mission Impossible film, you should probably start with this one. Do you feel that, we'll, we'll move one through three out, if you started with four and just kept going with new stuff, this is all you would need? We'll start with you, Sean. Uh, I was replying to a text. Can you say that again, please? We'll start with you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you a recap in the middle of doing it. Yeah, I think that you kind of can... Uh, start this film and you sort of pick it up after that but at the same time you're missing out on like a lot of the things that make this film a little bit better like the running through line of the film that is the entire purpose of Jeremy Renner's character is the idea that he was present when they killed Tom Cruise's wife so you don't see her at all I mean spoilers of course you know we always spoil things in for real she is still alive at the end and it was just you know like a Typical Mission Impossible, haha, fuck you, kind of a thing. But without knowing that and stuff like you kind of don't feel like, oh, well, that's why Tom Cruise is a little bit more unchained in this movie because he lost his wife. Well, you know, well, you can get into the movie and you can get the sense of that, but it just doesn't serve as well. Like, kind of the same way with the Bond films. Um, when Skyfall came out, I made my girlfriend at the time uh, watch the Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace because I couldn't get her to watch all the other ones. <laughs> but I knew that it was going to be a big film as far as like the franchise goes for fans of the series because it was the anniversary. So for somebody like myself, you know, I love the Bond films and I own every single one of them. And it's hard to watch 20 something movies. But if you watch all those movies and they do a line like in Skyfall where he Q says what were you expecting an exploding pen? I'm like, that's ah, gold mine. And then they show the car and it's the one from Goldfinger. And I'm like, that's fucking Goldfinger. Like, it kind of shit. Like, it makes it so much better. So, watching Mission Impossible 4, having seen the first three, makes it better. But I don't think that it's kind of a, it hinges on it. Like, you can't watch Return of the Jedi and not have seen at <laughs> least a new hope and empire. <laughs> Why did they kill that guy, and why do I care that he's saving his son? <laughs> yeah, and who is this Han Solo guy, and why the fuck is he so bad that he's captured before the movie starts? Like, you know, it's not like that where you have to literally watch it ahead of time, 
where like you can't watch Godfather two without having watched Godfather one, but you you can get away with it a little bit, you know. So Sean, uh, do you feel that if you started here at Ghost Protocol and just watched the new ones coming out, does it justify as a standalone film and building a new franchise? Yes, you can skip the other three because the other three are born as shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the long hair in the second one, man. You got long hair in this. That's fine. I think what Mission Impossible Two is coming down to is just watching like a motion graphic of Tom Cruise's hair to the background music of Hans Zimmer. <laughs> just uh, yeah, uh, the kind of shit that they have in the background, and just have him like hair blowing, and it's just like Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> The, the opening scene alone is like better than all the three films combined. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Frank Sinatra playing in the background when he's escaping prison is fucking great. Oh, I thought you were talking about the opening scene of Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> no. Mission Impossible 3. Uh, was protocol. Got me Alright, to give you some facts, the music was again done by Michael Cannoli. The cinematography was done by Robert <laughs> Elswit. Uh, edited by Paul Hirsch, distributed again by Paramount Pictures, and this time released in December, on December 21st, 2011, with a runtime of 133 minutes, a budget of $145 million, and then a box office of a $694.7 million. No wonder Tom Cruise can start his own church. Tony, high points, low points, and a ranking 1 to 10. High point, showing the wife at the end being okay. I liked that they kept the continuity of his wife instead of just sweeping it under the rug. Like, the Bond films, one of the downsides to those movies, or upsides, depending on how you look at it, is that each film kind of moves on. There's a new Bond girl, and he just, like, sometime between the last movie that, like, stopped existing, that relationship. Did you not watch Quantum of Solace? Well, there's only two times where it actually God. comes through. It's Quantum... The, the Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace stuff, and... With uh, Tracy in uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, but uh, I liked how they kept her alive too instead of killing her off because they could have just killed her off. I mean that would have made sense, but I liked the idea that it was sort of happier, and that's sort of making me think that when they decide to end this franchise, it would be cool if he got back together with her. And I like when movies end kind of happy. They don't have to, you know, if it's forced, but it does kind of make me feel a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe I like need movies to be happy because my life blows or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But uh, my least favorite scene is probably the sandstorm chase because you can't see, like, a goddamn thing of what's happening in the movie. So, oh, you know what? Actually, another positive is the, the climbing scene. Very similar to the vault scene. The tension is really cool. Um, one to ten? Yeah, what the hell? I'll give this one a seven, too. Sean, what were your final thoughts? High point, low point, and a ranking 1 to 10. High point! The opening prison scene. I, I like Frank Sinatra, and I listen to Frank Sinatra constantly. So hearing his music in an action film was pretty badass. And then the opening credits, where t Tom escapes the prison, he goes light the fuse, and you got the whole fuse yeah, going to the cool. music. That was pretty badass. There's your James Bond moment with the gun on the opening credits. Mm -hmm. And, um... Well, that's all I can remember from watching it. Because I fell asleep before the Dubai stuff happens. So, yeah. <laughs> si Simon Pegg was pretty good, though. What I remember of Simon Pegg. He was a lot more focused, you know. He had more more screen time. That's the fucking win on this film than he did on 3, I think. I like Benny. He's a good character. Benji, Benny, Benji, Benny. He yeah, takes that screen time away from Luther, though. Ah, fuck Luther, man. He's, a, he's doing his own thing as Superman. That's not the same guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's the dead dude? Yeah, dead dude. No? No. no I, <laughs> he's the guy from, that's been in all the other movies. <laughs> being raised. No, don't use that fucking actor's names, man. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Christ, the only one I know is Simon Pegg and Tom Cruise. So was your ranking three... But, uh, this one, uh, I'd give, I'd give a seven. Oh, uh, shit! It's, it's, it's an action film. If, if you're gonna watch an action film, you may as well watch this out of the, out of all of them. It's better than Jack Reacher, that's for sure. <laughs> 
Well, there you have it, folks. The mission is complete. We've made it through all four films. Barely, but we've well, done Sean it. didn't. <laughs> actually, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to change my mind, actually. Jack Reacher is a battle film. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go around the panel and see what you guys are up to. Tony, we'll start with you. Uh, well, all right. If you want to check out all the other stuff coming from fanboysanonymous.com, I'm sure I probably will be seeing Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, so I might be having a review point up pretty soon after that. Depends on when I get a chance to see it. And, uh, we, of course, will be doing another group meeting and, you know, the typical monthly kind of things. Not too sure what we're going to do next month for For Real, but leave us, uh, comments below if you have any suggestions. And, uh... For the wrestling side of things, smarkoutmoment.com. You can check out the Smack Talk podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can check out the All Talk Show whenever we decide to do that on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. And if you want to do anything else related to a mango tree, just start clicking on my name and I'll have links all over the place for you on the internet. Mr. Walker, what are you doing? Uh, if you like my sexy, sexy voice, why not head over to twitch.tv forward slash shaughnessy1989 to watch me play some video games and fail at video games. If not, if you haven't got time to watch me on the Twitch, you can always catch my streams, which I will upload to my YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash shaughnessy2k37. Or you can well, check you out the cinema sins based off of his <laughs> things. Or just, you know, tell, tell Jeremy that I sent you. And you never know, he might give me a shout out. <laughs> the buds. This is the four real movie I clubs where talking about your shit. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. That is another four real movie club in the books. Thank you for taking the leap, leap of faith with us and listening to us uh, review Mission Impossible. Go check out the new one. Like Tony said, we'll probably have a review point up for it a little bit later. Uh, so once again, thank you for wa uh, listening to the Four Wheel Movie Club, and keep on watching the movies. Dace Man out. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I'm too old for this. Good day, sir. You stay classy, San Diego. Rose. Well, we're going. We don't need Rose. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I'm finished. That little pig. I don't go. Hasta la vista, baby. Hey, everybody! We're all gonna get late! You're still here? It's over. Go home.